Old British German revised. So this is a term that I coined. It's a uh, proposed language category. Um, you won't find this in any uh, <laughs> a book about you know early medieval West Germanic languages. This is something that I coined uh, be because I, I think this would help uh, the field of historical linguistics in some shape or form. Uh, um, so this is a proposed language category uh, for early medieval West Germanic languages in, in Britain. It puts dialectology, or if you will, speech varieties, at the center and treats each variety as a language in its own right, so to speak. Um, and, and it is a, an attempt for accurate labeling purely from a linguistic, historical linguistic perspective. Okay? Because the uh, thing is, when it comes to Old English or Anglo-Saxon, it, 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 it's from the perspective that this is something, there's one variety, and people tend to look at these historical languages from a very present or modern view, uh, as if it were like something regulated and standardized and a uh, language of the state, this, this and that one. Really, that's not the case at all. So, uh, so in, in, uh, in academic terms, if you will, uh, this is taking um, speech varieties of early medieval uh, Britain, uh, uh, West Germanic speaking peoples, and, and putting a descriptivist perspective, seeing things as they are, describing things as they are, as opposed to a prescri prescriptivist uh, imposing what ought to be. All right, so let's move right on. So the update to this, um, or rev revision, uh, because I do have an earlier video on this, introducing this idea, that uh, Old British German is not complete without making Anglo-Saxon a subgroup of Anglish, oh sorry, forgive me, Old English and Old West Saxon. Why Old English instead of, let's say, uh, Old Anglian? Well, I mean, let's keep it Germanic, guys. Come on. Anyway, so, and Old West Saxon. Um, wording it in this way uh, gives, again, puts the center on dialectology and speech varieties, languages in their own right, so to speak, right? So, and thus this leaves Old Kentish as the outlier uh, for speech variety outside of Anglo-Saxon, but within the parameters of Old British German, within the parameters of, of a West Germanic speech, West Germanic language in Britain, what do you call this, um, you know, as a group? You can't call it all Anglo-Saxon because we have Old Kentish there, which is outside of that. So what do we do? So so if you will, this is, this is like miscellaneous Germanic, West Germanic located in Britain. So hence why I coined Old British German, which makes sense. And this is also inspired by, which I will talk about later, uh, Old High German and Old Low German. All right, so with Old Kentish has the relevant sound changes from Proto-West Germanic to its to Old Kentish to what it is in its form uh, as recorded, and it, and it's something that is West Germanic, or if you will, Germanic, and located in Britain. Okay, so next we have a table to articulate what I'm trying to articulate. Um, so we have Old British German as the, as the as the uh, overarching category, and Anglo-Saxon. Angel and Saxon makes sense, right? Um, as as a subcategory in this context, and the, and then within Old English, we have Old North English and Old South English. So what does this mean? So what am I what am I trying to articulate here? Well, Old North English would, would be what would be called uh, um, Old Northumbrian, and Old South English would be Old well, if you were Old uh, Mercian. Why did I coin, coin uh, these terms? Well, it's to keep the discourse and dialogue on historical linguistics. Because if I start using terms like uh, Mercian, Northumbrian, people will think all sorts of things like political history and this and that. Um, when, 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 the, when, this, when the dialogue should be on linguistics and linguistics, historical linguistics on its own, or if you will, historical phonology, to be very specific. Um, because because you can one can be easily sidetracked from you know associations of words and this and that. Um, some may be wondering why Kevin did you not put early and and late West Saxon? Because well the thing is I've been doing some reading on uh, the nature of Old West Saxon and to to suggest that uh, that there's a difference in variety 
uh, sorry, a difference like like treating old West, uh, sorry, old West Saxon as as a uh, a different dialect, if you will, as opposed to late West Saxon as, a, as another variety, which tends to be the case with a lot of um, historical linguists when it, when it comes to this. When really, um, it, it it's hard to make that argument, and I think I will make a video on this specifically why or 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 around this topic, uh, on this topic uh, in the future. And then we have Old Kentish here, which is not, I mean, it, it's still a Germanic, West Germanic variety, and, and, and located in Britain, um, if you will, but it's still, you know, uh, not within the context of Anglo, Anglo-Saxon, right? Um, so, but underwent the, the relevant sound changes. So moving right on. Uh, so this brings to the old West Germanic languages in general that we have our varieties here that old British German with old West Saxon, old Kentish, old English. We've got South and North, North and South, if you will. Then we got old low German of old Saxon, old Frisian, then old North Frankish. And within that, you got West and, uh, nor- and East, um, AKA uh, origin of old, um, well, also called old Dutch, but this is the origin of Dutch and origin of uh, Flemish, West Flemish. And then also we have Old High German, which we have Old South Frankish, which uh, that uh, within that you have Old um, uh, Middle and Rhine and East uh, Frankish. Then you got Old Alemannic and Old Bavarian. Um, you could throw in here uh, uh, um, Old um, Lam- uh, Lang- Langbardic, Langbardic, Bardic, uh, but but let's keep this uh, simplified. I don't want to make this video too complex for, for those of you who are new to this sort of thing. But so old British German is a category that I suggest, right? So if you were to present this to your uh, linguistics teacher, you'd be like, what the, what in the world is this made up term? Mm-hmm. So, okay. So I just wanted to present this as, as, as an idea, as, as something to emphasize and, and put dialectology, speech varieties at the center. Um, because the thing is, the problem or the issue, well, regarding Old English as a term, I mean, the term Old English was coined by Henry Sweet, and, and a lot of what we think of in terms of Old English, or, or sorry, Anglo-Saxon, or Old British German, comes from actually from Henry Sweet. Not many people know this, and, and uh, not everyone agrees with uh, Henry Sweet when you look into the scholarship of, um, of Anglo-Saxon, or, or if you will. And uh, going a little deeper... That you know, w- within the context of the time period, that English was you was a political and a uh, political linguistic term that was brought into a, and applied to other West Germanic speaking tribes due to circumstance. I mean, King Alfred, uh, it, you know, due to circumstance, he was fighting Vikings and thought, okay, we're all English here, and 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 due to demographics, uh, there are a lot of Angles, uh, not, not many Saxons. So and plus, he had a lot of Anglian helpers. Uh, from Mercia uh, to help him uh, write down and translate uh, um, wisdom texts, if you will. Uh, that's a weird way. Uh, well, I mean, well, like things, things that because thing is, King Alfred was about knowledge and learning and whatnot. So he had help from all over England. A lot of them were Angles that helped him. Also, people, some from people from the continent as well. But uh, but moving on, it's very li- unlikely that the non-English tribes before they came to Britain, also called their language English. Um, just as the Franks called their language Frankish and not of another tribe. So some people, due to uh, their limited knowledge on uh, this sort of stuff, they, uh, tend to assume that all the tribes that came to uh, Britain, they all called their language English. Well, I mean, these are Jutes, these are uh, Saxons, these are... And it would like you know being a tribe, you'd call your your own speech of your own tribe. Well, then after the name of your tribe, well, why would you call your your name of your own language of another tribe? That doesn't make sense. Um, so that that's something I have to say. But anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're new, and if you really like the channel, please become a patron at my Patreon page down below. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.